So I, while browsing for battery meters, came across this wireless battery meter. And um, I decided to buy one. It's a little over $30. Um, this is the 100 amp version. And I thought it looked interesting. In theory, this is a completely wireless uh, battery meter that you can carry around and check on your, um, your battery remotely. And if you look on the back, this is actually a Wi-Fi chip that's on the back here. And um, um, this Wi-Fi chip on the back, um, you know, broadcasts uh, back to the base station and allows you to monitor uh, your battery. This is a Hall Effect sensor type, um, type meter. So you have to run your, your power wire through here. This actually takes the battery negative that goes through this, not the positive, the battery negative. Um, and the arrow um, is kind of backwards. Um, the load goes on this side and the battery goes on this side. So the, the energy is running on the negative wire from the load back to the battery. So that's why the arrow is pointing this way back to the battery. Um, so it's got a whole it's got a whole effect sensor that measures the, the the current. This is the 100 amp version. This is the base station. This is the wireless monitor, and um, we'll go through the monitor in a second. Um, the base station um, does take power um, over here. Um, sorry, I banged the camera. Um, this monitor does take. Uh, 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 the, the, yeah, the monitor base station does take power, takes power in here, and that's how it gets a voltage reading. Uh, you just hook that up to the battery, and I think this is good to uh, 35 or 40 volts um, on here. Actually, I think it's good to 60, if I remember, I think, it's believe, I think I, believe, I believe it's good to 60 volts that you can hook up here, and then you'll get a voltage reading from here, and then the Hall Effect sensor measures the um, amps. Obviously, this Hall Effect sensor, some Hall Effect sensors can actually open up so you can put it around a cable. This is a solid cast Hall Effect sensor. What that means is when you take your cable, um, your cable cannot already be, say, um, soldered onto an, an EC5 or, or an XT60 connector and already soldered to the battery because you'll have no way of running it through the Hall Effect sensor your cable will have to be, you know, you will have to be able to disconnect your sensor, uh, I mean, sorry, your cable and run it through the Hall Effect sensor um, in, order to, uh, in order to rig this up. Um, I am going to, uh, I'm actually gonna uh, set this up on my uh, power wall and then we'll run through the display and check out some of the settings and we'll go from there. Okay, I have temporarily wired um, this meter up to my uh, power wall. I have the, the negative uh, wire going to the inverter um, and I actually have my, um, my shunt from my old meter down here so I'll be able to compare the readings from the old meter and uh, this new wireless meter. Um, as you can see I've just uh, put a power wire to it that comes off my bus bars over there just temporarily and, uh, and like I said we've got the whole effect sensor on the negative um, so we can measure the uh, current draw. Okay, let's uh, let's check out this uh, let's check out this uh, battery uh, uh, display here. So this is wireless, although it does need um, USB power. I have it plugged right into a, a, a USB adapter right now. Um, again, you could hook this up to your computer in the house, or hook this up on a, a battery um, a, 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 you know a battery pack if you wanted to uh, take this wirelessly. And we'll see what kind of range this has in a second, but let's just run through the display. Um, so I do have my inverter turned on right now, but nothing is running, there's no load. So it's detecting uh, 1.7 amps, and the battery's at 28.4 volts. Again, this is a 29 volt 7S system, so that's fine. Um, the, uh, there are these options on the side here. Um, so NCP over here, and you actually had to, of course, this thing came with no um, instructions, so I had to look this. Um, I had to go back to the eBay listing to see what all these things mean. Um, let's look it up. Uh, NCP is your overcharge current protection. Uh, OCP is your over discharge current protection. 
Um, OVP is your overcharge voltage protection and LVP is your over discharge voltage protection. So um, NCP here, um, let's see if you can see down here, it's in little, uh, it's pretty small writing on down in the bottom corner here, but I have it set at uh, 30 amps. Um, um, I don't want to charge at higher than 30 amps and uh, 30 amps is my charging, um, is my charging current. Uh, overcharge, pr discharge protection, I have it set at 75 amps. My uh, inverter at full load pulls about 65 amps, so 75 amps is fine. Um, let's go down here to over voltage protection. Uh, 29.4, yes, a 7S battery should not get higher than 29.4 volts, so that's fine. And uh, low voltage protection, what I got that at? 21 volts, 21 volts on a 7S is three volts a, a battery, that's fine. Um, the only other setting that you can that you mess with is, this is a um, battery percentage. Um, you kind of manually set what your battery percentage is. I have it, it's right now at 88% because I'm slightly down from 29.4 volts. Um, but I actually need to reset that once the battery is completely charged to 29.4 volts, I need to reset that to 100% and then that'll, that affects the, um, how full this battery gauge um, looks. But let's um, check out how accurate this meter is. Um, let me turn on my air conditioning. Okay, air conditioning is kicking on. Oh, sorry. Bang the camera there. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Uh, yep, pulling uh, 36 amps, 1,000 watts. Um, that's about right for my air conditioning. My air conditioning pulls anywhere between 1 kilowatt and 1.5 kilowatts. Um, so uh, it's pulling 1 kilowatt right now, 35 amps. Um, and uh, let's uh, let's actually uh, go mobile and go and see what my other meter is showing right now. Let's put this down and go mobile. Okay, so uh, yes, this meter is showing uh, 36 amps. 36 amps there, and this is showing uh, 30. Well, it's rising, so this is saying. 40 amps right now, uh, 41 amps, 39 amps. So there's about a two amp difference. Um, not, not too bad. Uh, set this, let's check the amps here. Fortunately, I have to climb up on my, on my thing here. That is showing right now, uh, 45 amps, 45 amps. This is showing 46 amps. So pretty accurate about maybe, it's maybe within one amp. Um, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, now the real question is what sort of range does this have? So um, give me a second and we'll take this mobile and we'll see what kind of range we get on this. Okay, uh, we're about to test what kind of range this thing has. You can see my air conditioning is really rocking and rolling right now, pulling 60 amps, um, 1600 watts. Um, and actually you can just hear the inverter fired on. Anyways, I've hooked this up to a, uh, a little uh, power bank. And uh, let's take a walk and see what kind of uh, range we have here. I'm in my uh, garage right now, the first floor of my garage. Um, let's um, step outside. and see all right i'm outside right now uh, still still getting a signal actually yeah i am uh i'm a good distance from the house right now and uh yeah still getting a signal no problems Okay, so I am on the third floor of my house and it does appear as though the meter just cut out once I got to the third floor of my house. Um, so my power wall is in my garage on the first floor. 
and I'm two floors above. Let's see, oh, see that just got a signal here, right here. Yeah, so three floors might be sort of the le the limit or the range of this uh, of this uh, wireless transmitter. But that's, I mean, that's great. I mean, that means you can sort of be in your house and check on your shed or check on your garage um, wirelessly and see where the battery pack's at, no problems.